Welcome to Paul's Hardware, guys. Last month in July, I built these two systems, both based on AMD's new Ryzen 3000 series processors. This system costs just under $4,000. This system costs just under $1,000. My plan is to set them both up and do a comparison between the two when it comes to both CPU and gaming performance. But many people pointed out that they haven't exactly had the easiest time when upgrading an older Ryzen 300 or 400 series motherboard to work with the new Ryzen 3000 series processors. Case in point, I have the MSI B450 Tomahawk in this system, and I knew right off the bat that it wasn't recognizing the CPU properly. So today, in order to get these systems set up properly, I'm gonna be updating the BIOS to work with the new series of processors, and I thought, why not see what you guys have potentially been going through by updating 300 and 400 series motherboards to work with the new processors, walk you guys through the process, and let you know if I have any troubles as well. Excellent! At this point, I'd like to briefly pause to remind you that this video is brought to you by the Paul's Hardware Merch Store, currently being modeled by my daughter, Hannah, who has a slight case of the hiccups, but she's demonstrating the Paul's Hardware logo here on her pink onesie. Pink onesies are special order only, but there's tons of merch available on my store. Check it out at paulshardware.net and um, you can help support me and my daughter. Isn't she cute? Isn't it great how I'm exploiting her for my own personal economic gain? So here's the basic plan for today. I have AMD 300 series or 400 series motherboards, both B350 and X370, as well as B450 and X470. I'll start off by installing a first gen Ryzen processor into the board so we can just pull it up and see what BIOS version it currently has installed. Then I will immediately swap to the 3000 series Ryzen processor, the 3600, and see what happens with the older version of the BIOS. If I'm able to update the BIOS without swapping to the older CPU, I will do that and let you guys know how I was able to do that or if necessary, I will drop in the old CPU, update the BIOS, switch back to the newer CPU, and then see what happens. In order to hopefully keep things running smoothly and quickly, I'm gonna be setting it all up right here on the kitchen table. I've got the EVGA 650 GQ power supply to provide power to the system that's set up. I've got the Zotac GTX 1650 graphics card here, specifically because it doesn't require supplemental power, so that'll be easy enough to pop in and get video outs, since none of the processors I'm testing have video outs. I've got some Arctic MX4 thermal paste to replace, as we're gonna be swapping CPUs a lot. I've got a Samsung 960 Evo, no, 960 Pro NVMe, SSD with Windows 10 installed onto it so we can actually jump into the operating system. And I've got my laptop set up right here with the Razer Ripsaw capture card so I can actually capture in the BIOS and let you guys see what the heck's going on. All that said, let's start off with this system and the MSI Tomahawk B450. So right out of the gates, uh, we had no signal, basically nothing. This system is not outputting a video signal at all, which would mean if you had just put this together, you'd probably have to do what I'm about to do, which is to shut the system off, pull the CPU out, uh, install a CPU that will work in this motherboard with the older version of the UEFI, just gonna be a 1000 series or possibly a 2000 series CPU, uh, and then reboot it, update the BIOS, and then reinstall the newer CPU. There's two possible ways that you might be able to get away around this. One is if the motherboard has some some form of BIOS flashback. Asus calls it USB BIOS flashback. MSI and uh, Gigabyte have names for theirs as well. And that allows you to update the system's BIOS with a special USB plug on the back of the motherboard without a CPU or, or memory installed. And that will let you get around this problem if you didn't have an older Ryzen processor to swap out to. There's one other possibility that I only know of theoretically, which is that the UEFI is able to at least get basic functionality, even if it's an older version with the 3000 series processor just enough to allow you to get in there to update the BIOS, even though you have the newer processor installed, although I'm not 100% sure if that is a thing, so I'll let you know if we come to it. In this case, though, we're doing a CPU swap right off the bat. Look guys, I put the memory in the wrong slots. I, I kind of screwed up a few things on this build, didn't I? Anyway, it just warned me that I should swap those to, to better slots, so I'll do that. So now that we're on a Ryzen 7 1700, we can see that we've booted into Windows. That's kind of nice. Uh, our B450 Tomahawk is currently on BIOS version 1.5. That was uh, back in January of 2019. Meanwhile, we have updated it with uh, this new version, 7C02V1A. Seems like a vast improvement from 1.5. Hold the shift key while you press restart. 
This is interesting. The BIOS version here is E7C02 AMS.150. So that, I guess that's your version 1.5 there on the end. I'm going to use M Flash, uh, which does require a quick reboot. And now we can choose our USB drive, the BIOS version we want to update to. I guess we're going from version 1.5 to version 1.A. That's linear. And now we wait. And now the BIOS update has completed. We've actually completely changed UIs because MSI is now using their Click BIOS UI, but uh, here we can see things seem to be functional. So now we're gonna shut the system down, swap back to our 3000 series processor and see if it's working. And this here is what I would expect to see after doing a system update and then swapping in the updated processor. We have at the top of the screen, the Ryzen 5 3600X recognized. It's just letting us know that there's some system changes. So F1 to run setup. I'm gonna save and reset, and then hopefully we will boot into Windows without further problems. So now after booting back into Windows, uh, and by the way, this is Windows 10, but it's an older installation and I haven't connected to the internet to update it or anything, which is why we don't have GPU drivers installed or anything like that. But the main point is, uh, as you can see, 3600X is being recognized. We have six cores and 12 threads also recognized. Things seem to be functioning properly as they should be. So that is good news for me. I apologize to anyone who has been having any difficulties updating, especially this board in particular, because there has been a little back and forth on that. And it does seem like the system is good to go for the futures. Next victim here is a budget ASRock board from the B350 lineup. This is the AB350M Pro 4 Micro ATX motherboard. Was very inexpensive, but still pretty decent at the time. So I've installed the Ryzen 7 1700 and we can see here we're actually working with a pretty old version of the BIOS, actually 3.10. If we go over to the ASRock page, we can actually see they have quite a few updated versions, but it says if the current BIOS version is older than 5.5, then use 5.5 first before you update to 5.9, which is the current one. So if we go back to 5.5, it says if you are updating to 5.5, you need to update to 3.4 first. So we're gonna need to update to 3.4, then to 5.5, and then to 5.9 in order to get this BIOS version up to date to hopefully recognize the 3600 series processor. Here goes. So the story with the AB350M Pro 4 from ASRock is that yes, it was able to update. Yes, it did need three distinct updates, which took a little while, but honestly, I was just able to update one, restart, update two, restart, and so on. And now we have rebooted and recognized our Ryzen 5 3600 six core processor. We've moved on to the Asus Prime B350 Dash Plus, which is our last B350 motherboard that we're working with. This current board is using a BIOS all the way back from April 25th, 2017. That is version 0609. There are no less than 19 BIOS updates that Asus has done for this board between then and now. So that's impressive. Currently on version 5007 released at the beginning of July. So the other nice thing about this board is uh, it's not doing the multiple BIOS updates the way the ASRock board did. I should just be able to go in and access the Easy Flash utility and update directly from that very old BIOS to the much newer BIOS. Hey, splash screen again. All right, uh, we've done the update on the B350 plush, plus, plush, kind of plush, I guess, uh, Prime from Asus. Happy that it only took one BIOS update to get from that very old version to the very new version. Uh, it's detected our new CPU has been installed since we just updated to the 3600, which is showing up in the BIOS 3600 six core processor. I'm gonna save and reset. And there we go, we're booted up into Windows. I'm loading a old version of CPU Z, which we uh, can see we got our 3600 there. It's even running at 4.2 gigahertz. And then we can see the motherboard has updated to version 5007. Good on that. And now the story with the X370 Killer SLI AC from ASRock. I initially thought we actually had a board that wasn't gonna work right, but that was because I've sort of started to lose track of things and I didn't do all three updates. Once again, with the ASRock board, we had to go from the very old BIOS to the slightly newer BIOS to the slightly newer BIOS to the up-to-date BIOS. Fortunately, once all those are updated though, I was able to again drop in the 3600. It is currently being recognized. I'm going to save and reset, double check it works in Windows. And as we have done before, we'll say yes, good, hopefully, and then move on. So there it is again. We've booted into Windows once again and our CPU is recognized. We all have all of our cores and threads. Excellent. Fabulous. Uh, we're now done with the 300 series motherboards. We actually already did a B450 motherboard. So uh, let's take a look at some X470 options. 
Now since this MSI X470 Gaming M7AC is one of the kind of newer motherboards being a 400 series board X470 chipset, I wanted to try once again to see if it could handle a 3000 series processor at all, give me any functionality. And the answer is pretty much no, the fan spun up, but uh, the debug LED, which it has over there on the side, which is very convenient for stuff like this, froze on CPU. So that tells us the CPU is not recognized or not functioning properly. So now we've rebooted back with the 1700 installed and we're going to do the BIOS update. And once again, and just to give you guys the contrast, we're currently on version E7B77AMS.111T3 from March 2018. And we're updating to 7B77V19, uh, which was posted as of July 15th. So after the BIOS update, we were once again presented with MSI's new Click BIOS, which uh, isn't very colorful, but I kind of like. It's just got sort of a more basic BIOS layout, which is fairly easy to navigate around. 3600 was recognized there, fortunately, and then I rebooted into Windows, and we're now seeing it in Windows too. We got all our cores and threads, uh, so everything is looking good here as well. I was hoping that maybe this being a newer, higher-end X470 board, we might have had a little bit more flexibility, but I still had to use the Ryzen first-gen processor in order to get the BIOS updated properly. Properly. Now I should point out that with 400 series motherboards, you could also do that with a Ryzen second gen processor, a 2000 series, uh, because all the 400 series motherboards should be out of the box compatible with the 2000 series of Ryzen processors. But of course, we're talking about 3000 series support in this video. I have one more motherboard to test, but this time I'm gonna try to do the update from an old version, pre-Ryzen 3000 series, and not use the 1700. All right guys, I installed the 3600 into the Crosshair 7 Hero. This is using an old version uh, of the UEFI. I don't know how old it is, but I know it's not updated for Ryzen 3000 series support. It did not work. Uh, we got a debug code LED of eight and we didn't get much beyond that, but I, I, I know it's not working basically. So what I am going to do next is first power this off by holding the power button on. And next we're gonna use USB BIOS flashback, which is a feature that Asus originally started. Uh, there's a variant of USB BIOS flashback on certain MSI and Gigabyte boards as well, as far as I know. I'm not 100% sure if Azerac has this capability yet, but uh, keep an eye out for it because it's super handy, especially if you're in a situation like this. You don't need a CPU or memory installed, but I'm gonna leave that installed for now. You take the version of the BIOS that you wanna update to, you rename it to a special name, C7H.cap in this particular situation, put it on the root of a USB drive that's form formatted FAT16 or FAT32, plug it into the port on the back that's labeled BIOS in this case, and then there is a BIOS BIOS button, which I'm going to hold for three seconds. And now it starts flashing blue. At this point, you wait until the light finishes flashing or until the light goes off, and then the BIOS should be updated. Fingers crossed. Let's hope it works. Well guys, I ended up having to push this through another day because I wasn't fully convinced that the USB BIOS flashback on this Crosshair 7 uh, Hero motherboard was, was malfunctioning. So I decided to just leave it on with the light solid to see if it was updating. Turns out it wasn't malfunctioning and it also turns out it was completely my fault because there's actually a Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard and then there's what I have, which is the Crosshair 7 Hero Wi-Fi, which Asus determines as two different models, which means I had downloaded the wrong UEFI BIOS so it wasn't accepted accepting it on this motherboard, different model numbers. I only discovered this because I actually had to go and install the Ryzen 1700 CPU here because I was gonna try to update it to a, sort of an in-between BIOS to see if BIOS flashback would work then, but then the in-between BIOS that I was trying to update to wouldn't be recognized on this board either. So it was like, hey, this is the wrong BIOS. And then I was like, oh yeah, Wi-Fi. So finally figured out, that out, thankfully. Downloaded the right UEFI, renamed it to the proper name that I had to have on the boot drive, which I think it was C7H Wi-Fi, plugged it into the BIOS port, press the button, it's kept flashing. It only took maybe four or five minutes. Finally, it just stops flashing. Then you shut it down, install your hardware the way you need to, boot back up. It's gonna boot cycle a couple times and I definitely noticed that the debug LED was doing more things than just freezing at eight like it had been before. Finally gave me a BIOS updating message and then refreshed one more time and booted into Windows. Fantastic. Uh, I actually went into the UEFI, set the XMP values as well. So we now have CPU-Z recognizing our 3600 processor, all the cores and threads, and even the memory is running at 3400, which is the rated speed of this uh, memory kit right here. So fantastic. But what have we learned today? I've learned that it's good to revisit things from time to time because I often overlook things that I've come to take for granted, such as using too much force when trying to uninstall or install a CPU cooler on a motherboard. If you're trying to apply force towards something to get it on, like attaching one of these CPU heatsink fans from AMD that snaps around the little clasps on the outside of the AM4 socket, 
mount. Uh, you probably don't want to take something like a screwdriver and apply a significant amount of force directly down towards the motherboard because if the screwdriver slips, it's going to go right at the motherboard, possibly knocking off some SMT components or something like that. Initially, when I set this board back up after doing what I just described to you, I got no response from it at all. I wiggled around the little, uh, I believe the little transistor there that I, I knocked loose, and now it's booted back up, or at least we have power going through it again. However, I do not have uh, high hopes for the longevity of this board, at least not without some soldering going on, which is not in the cards for today's video. So that said, a word of warning and a PSA to you guys, don't do what I just did. Be very careful with that and try not to damage your components like I did. Second thing is to reality check, especially if you're trying to do something like USB BIOS flashback, the model number of your motherboard, because if you get that messed up, you might think something is wrong when it's really just user error. And I think the third thing and probably the most important takeaway for anyone who's looking to do an upgrade like this, especially if you're planning to save a little bit of money by going with a 300 series or 400 series motherboard, is it is absolutely vital in a lot of scenarios to simply have an older Ryzen processor to be able to install and do the upgrade with. What if you're in a situation where you don't have that though? What are your options? I will list a few of them for you here. One would be to potentially buy an older Ryzen processor and then return it. But then you might have to deal with more draconian return policies. Open box CPUs are not always returnable, and sometimes you have to deal with the restocking fee, which would cut into the amount of money that you end up having if afterwards. I would also suggest finding your local friendly PC repair shop, bring your motherboard in there, and any PC repair shop that's worth its salt should have a processor, the hardware to set up to be able to do that update for you. And a quick suggestion to PC repair shop owners out there, and I've made this before, consider offering this as a free service to get people into your shop and familiar, familiar with you. It doesn't cost you anything except a little bit of time, or at least charge a reasonable amount for it. Maybe 10 to 20 bucks, I think seems like a normal amount to me. Finally, there is a AMD loaner program for third gen Ryzen PCs. You have to jump through a few more hoops, like taking pictures of your hardware and sending them proof of purchase and stuff like that. But AMD will send you an Athlon 200 GE processor, which you can slot in to do the BIOS updates, and then you return it back to them. I haven't gone through that uh, process myself, but I will post an article in the description that describes it, as well as links to how to access that if you are in dire need of a processor and those other solutions weren't working for you. All that said though, guys, I hope you've learned a little bit from this video or at least watched me struggle through updating a lot of motherboards, which was more time consuming than I initially anticipated, but got through it. And honestly, other than the one that I broke, I think pretty much they were all successful. So that's good too. Last thing I wanna point out is there are people who claim that they were having problems with updates to motherboards like this after the facts. The stuff like XMP values resetting, having to clear the CMOS. I can't speak to that because I've really only been doing basic setup to confirm that the update took place. So uh, if you guys are having further problems, of course, share those in the video description down below and let us know what your experience has been like. Thank you guys so much for watching this video though. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys next time.